あうがむがむがおお Hey there, everybody. This is 22 Tiger Dude here, or should I say 22 Spooky Dude here. For this Halloween, happy Halloween to everybody, I am going to be reviewing straight out of nowhere Scooby Doo meets Courage the Cowardly Dog. And this film does have the voice talents of Frank Welker, Gray Delisle, Matthew Lillard, Kate m i c u c h i Jeff Bergman, Marty Grabstein, and Thea White. And the movie is about when Scooby hears a strange noise which leads him and the Mystery Incorporated gang to Nowhere, Kansas, which is where Curse of Cowardly Dog, Eustace, and Muriel live at. And of course, they all get together when danger is upon them. So before I get into my thoughts for Straight Out of Nowhere, I'm going to leave it to my guest star, Andrew Hayes, to review the movie first. So, Andrew, take it away, man. What is going on, guys? It's your boy, Ahaha, not skinny penis, but Andrew Hayes. And、um, I'm back.、Um, not only back doing reviews, but doing something with Tony. It's been like a year or t- two years, I, know, I should say, because we didn't do one last year because 2020 sucked. We're going to do the newly released,、uh, straight out of nowhere, Scooby Doo meets Courage the Calorie. Cowardly Dog. Now, when I first heard that this movie was becoming a thing, I was honestly, the first like, reaction, my first、uh, knee jerk reaction, was that I was actually pretty excited for it.、Uh, I am, as you guys know,、um, I'm a big fan of Scooby Doo. I grew up on that shit. It's one of my favorite、um, just properties in general. But、um, I'm also actually a pretty big fan of Courage the Cowardly Dog, too. That is something I also like, is a, was a big part of my childhood. You know, that feels like this movie should already have been a thing. You know, you got two iconic dogs dealing with spooky stuff. I was pretty excited.、Uh, the kid in me was excited. But then I saw the trailer, and I wasn't too hot on the trailer. I didn't really care. Like the trailer, it made it look stupid. Let me get right into this review. Starting off with the positives,、um, the positives, first of all, I think the animation is、uh, pretty well done. I mean, with、uh, the Scooby Doo movies in general, just Scooby Doo、uh, in general, it has,、uh, it's been really good animation. It has a very similar animation to、uh, Scooby Doo、uh, Mystery Incorporated,、uh, that show, and I really like the animation style in that show, so. I really like the animation here. I like、um, how it, like, it kept true to the animation, like the looks of everything and with Courage and Scooby in the past, but like modernizing it. So it's really, really well done animation. I really, really enjoyed the animation. And I also, especially like on the Scooby Doo side, really like the voice acting as well. The voice acting in the Scooby Doo animated movies has been done very, very well. I mean, Matthew Lillard has been Shaggy Rogers, well, since 2002 <laughs> when he did the live action one, but he's been voicing Shaggy Rogers for so long. He is literally the perfect Shaggy Rogers. He just has been killing it. Also,、uh, Frank Weller, who、uh, does Scooby Doo, and I believe did Fred Jones in this, and does Fred Jones in a lot of other stuff.、Um, you know, also, like, just continues to kill it. I mean, the perfect voice、uh, right now for Scooby Doo. Um, and、uh, what I essentially grew up on. <laughs> and everybody else does a really good job.、Um, the, the voice acting is really well. This movie has a lot of like, good, good moments interacting with the characters.、Um, like, there's a, like, a scene where Muriel cooks cookies for everybody, and Scooby and Shaggy,、uh, like, being, I guess, the people who love eating food as they are, obviously get really excited and just. Eat a lot of cookies. So, like, that was a really, really cool scene and really fun scene. And I also really like、um, the stuff between, obviously, Shaggy, Scooby, and Courage because,、um, I, like, I think I didn't realize this, but they're all kind of, they all kind of have, like, similar personalities. Like, they're all pretty big scaredy cats. Obviously, like, Courage, <laughs> if you've seen the show, pretty big scaredy cat. And Scooby and Shaggy, also very big scaredy cats. Like, they need to be bribed with. Food to go do their stuff. So I thought, like, that.、Um, I never realized that. So I thought, like, that was interesting. And also, speaking of that, there is、um, this, like, over. 
arcing story arc throughout the whole movie of Scooby and Shaggy trying to deal with their fear and trying to, uh, like, I guess, be more brave and have, no pun intended, courage. And that it was pretty nice. And I like the overall, like, theme of that. Like, that was um, also uh, pretty nice and pretty well done. And it was a nice message. Now, on to the negatives. Um, my biggest issue with this movie was is that the writing was, in my opinion, pretty poorly done. Um, I think that uh, the story, especially with something that should have been as epic as these two characters meeting, was pretty, pretty weak. And, like, the whole what happens is, like, not satisfying, and the whole, uh, like, reasoning, it's, like, not satisfying, and, um, like, they do dive into, like, oh, why does nowhere, why is it have all this, this spooky stuff happen, and they do mention that, which I do like, and it's, like, kind of, like, this unknown but, like, they never really dive into that. And I thought it would have been pretty cool to find out, like, why. Like, all this weird stuff happens to nowhere. And no one can explain why. And, like, I thought it would have been pretty cool, like, if, like, something big happens and they needed Mystery Inc. Uh, to come. And, like, that would have felt more natural or something. But they they have this thing where you know Scooby hears a sound and runs off and goes and ends up in nowhere because of this radio frequency and that just kind of felt forced to me and it felt like oh like them meeting wasn't earned and as a result of them meeting wasn't earned like what they what is happening like what the main like i guess big evil plot happening isn't earned and like some stuff that happens because of the stuff that's going on isn't earned, and, like, there's a, a, a twist at the end that should feel satisfying, because it is, um, uh, it's, it's fan service. It, really, it is. I mean, it's not, it is fan service, and that should feel satisfying, but it's not because it doesn't feel earned and just kind of feels out of left field, and no pun intended, out of nowhere. That would have been cool if... It was written stronger, and, like, the, the evil plot was stronger. And also, like, in terms, in terms of the writing, what also really, really annoyed me uh, was, it, it, like, there's a lot of comedy in it. And, like, comedy is obviously, like, something that's a big part of both series and both franchises and both properties. But it just doesn't work. What they try to do, like, I, I, I it just feels forced. It... it it isn't funny. There's this whole running joke with Eustace where he constantly tries to scare Scooby, Shaggy, and Courage. And that was funny once, but it happens throughout the whole movie. And it goes, all right, like, it, enough is enough. Yeah, I get it. Like, that was supposed, that's like supposed to be like a, a callback to Courage and some fan service. But like I've said, the fan service just doesn't work in this because it doesn't feel earned. It, 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 it's it, like and, and they do have some references to courage like with some of the villains and some of the stuff that happened but again it, they never really like go into it all that much and it doesn't feel earned and um and there's this whole like side thing and like whole like thing where Eustace raps and I really like didn't think that was necessary like kind of pissed me off like, it was really bad. The rapping wasn't good. The song wasn't good. It wasn't funny. It, and, and again, like, it just felt completely unnecessarily. Um, ultimately, um, I'm pretty bummed that uh, the movie turned out the way it was because the negatives outweigh the positives for me in this situation. And this feels like a movie that was kind of too little, too late. Like, this should have happened years ago like in the early 2000s and I think it would have worked so much better than the writing very weak um and that ultimately drags it down unfortunately um I did not like this movie um as a big fan of both properties and I do have to rate this a C um 
it's unfortunate that I feel this way, but um, I, I guess if there's one silver lining, we do have a thing where both of these, uh, these we do have a movie where both of these characters meet, and now, you know, it's out in, like, they do exist in the same universe, so th that's still pretty cool, even though the movie isn't cool. But thank you so much, uh, Tony, um, for for having me do this again, and thank you so much uh, to everybody watching it, um, and I remember to see you guys next time. Holler if you hear me. Thank you so much, Andrew, for reviewing Straight Out of Nowhere. So, when it comes to my thoughts on Curse of Cowardly Dog and Scooby-Doo, both properties obviously are very nostalgic for me. I grew up just loving both cartoons very much. I love Scooby-Doo, the world of it, and I love Curse of Cowardly Dog, and I found the world of it very weird and fascinating too. And, you know, when I heard about a crossover movie coming out, I was really looking forward to it because I do think... A Courage and Scooby-Doo crossover movie can really, really work. It's not really bizarre, to be honest, because both do kind of deal with similar things where they're dealing with monsters and other strange uh, things that they encounter. I was just really hoping that this movie could really deliver because I did see a lot of promise in it. And it was just going to be nice to see Courage, Eustace, and Muriel again because obviously we haven't seen them in years while Scooby to this day is still going on but still even then it's still cool to see Scooby in the gang so after watching this crossover movie yeah this one to be honest it didn't really work for me um it's a shame because I like I said both are very nostalgic properties in my opinion but this movie itself I don't know if it's a matter of it being too late that this came out maybe something that could have come out a long time ago maybe it could have worked better then I don't know yeah I didn't really care for this one to be honest it's not anything terrible don't get me wrong it's not anything bad but I just definitely felt very underwhelmed now of course I am gonna start off with my positives so to start off with my positives I will say that the animation, honestly, it looks really, really dang good. I am honestly really impressed with how the overall style looks. And when it comes to the animation on the Courage and Scooby characters, they look really good. They match with each other very perfectly. They could have fallen that trap where they look out of place. Like maybe the Mystery and Corporate Gang looks a little bit different from like the Courage Gang and they blend very well with the background. And of course, when the Scooby Gang is in nowhere Kansas they do look really well done when they're there when they're obviously inside the house of Courage Muriel and Eustace everything looks really good and I think the animators deserve a lot of prop there's one particular sequence it involves when Scooby and Courage are digging that's all I'm going to say as far as that goes, but that entire sequence alone was really impressive, and regardless of what I think about this movie as a whole, that one sequence right there is definitely something I'll definitely really think about. And when it comes to both the Courage Gang and Scooby Gang just interacting with each other, it is really cool. Like, it is really cool to see Scooby interact with Courage, considering they're both dogs. They both have their own funny and unique personality so it did make sense to be honest to have those two really cross over with each other and when it comes to that there's definitely some fun interactions with them or even like when it's just shaggy scooby and courage regardless of how i feel about the story there were some fun interactions regarding the characters i will say without spoilers i say the climax is definitely the most fun part of the movie for me i don't want to spoil why but i do think what they do with the climax is just personally the most interesting part of the feature there are also really nice callbacks here obviously something that i don't think is going to be a spoiler if i mention it but they do use that courage score that boom 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 and man did it 
just feels so good hearing that again because uh, that score is just iconic in Curves of Cowardly Dogs. So being able to hear that in this feature, that was really cool. There's other things here and there that were pretty cool. It's not a spoiler if I mention that there's going to be a reveal at the end of the movie. And once again, no spoilers, but I will say that I did like the reveal at the end of this movie. That was actually a pretty cool touch. And of course, lastly, I should talk about the voice performances. Everyone, honestly, voice acting wise, I do think they do a very solid job here. I don't think anyone is particularly giving a very weak voice performance. I do think everyone does a really good job. Frank Welker, I mean, he's iconic as Scooby-Doo. I'm pretty sure tons have just talked about him, but the guy just really knows how to voice Scooby. And he also voices Fred as well, which he also does a really good job of voicing. Gray Delisle is really good as Daphne. She always has been, to be honest. Like, she really gets the Daphne voice down. Matthew Lillard, tons have talked about him, but there's a reason that people talk about him because the dude is just perfect at Shaggy ever since the live action Scooby-Doo movies. Kay Mikuchi, the name I hope I pronounced right by the way, voices Velma and I thought she did a very good job as Velma. She definitely brings an interesting personality to her. And then of course getting to the courage side of things now, we have Jeff Bergman as Eustace. Uh, just awesome all around. And for those not aware, Lionel Wilson was the original voice for Eustace, but he passed away back in 2003. But I do have to say that Jeff Bergman did a really good job of stepping in for Lionel Wilson. Marty Grabstein as Courage. He is just so good as Courage. And then, of course, bless her soul, Thea White as Muriel also does a really wonderful job. I'm very happy she got to voice Muriel at least one last time before she passed away because she truly just brought such a delightful personality to Muriel and that's something that will definitely never be forgotten. It truly has never felt like time passed by for them. They just got in the recording booth and they voiced their characters from Curse of Cowardly Dog like it was yesterday, which is really impressive. But I have to be honest and say they definitely have never lost a beat when it comes to that. All of them, the Courage Gang and the Scooby Gang, honestly, really, really good voice work right there. Now, like I said, as much as I give the movie credit for those positives that I did mention, it's the negatives that really, really weigh this movie down for me. And it's soul crushing that I personally just did not like this movie because um, both properties do mean a lot to me. Even to this day, I'd say they still mean a lot to me. So the fact that I couldn't enjoy this one as much as I did, it's, it's definitely soul crushing. I cannot lie. It's very disappointing. And, you know, I just gotta say it, the biggest thing is, Despite how short this movie is, and I know to be fair, a lot of these Scooby-Doo movies are normally really short anyways, but I was just so bored with this one. I cannot lie. The humor too, didn't really laugh most times with the humor. As much as I really enjoyed like seeing the Courage the Cowardly Dog Gang and the Mystery Incorporated Gang interact with each other, as far as the overall humor goes, a lot of it wasn't really clicking for me. Some moments obviously gave me good laughs, but for the most part, I was just sitting there just thinking the humor just could be so much stronger in my opinion. And there's running gags that do get tired. Like, obviously they have to do Eustace bringing back his booga 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 with the mask and all that. And the first time, yeah, pretty funny. And then they overused that gag, and it just got tiring. And, you know, speaking of use, this is another running gag with, like, the politician. And it's like, yeah, I could see what you're doing there with the politician gags. It's kind of funny the first time, but after a while, when you keep milking that joke, it's just personally not working. Um, it just felt really forced, in my opinion. Even though there are some callbacks that I really enjoyed, there were some here and there that just... Felt a little forced. The fan service thing, I guess you could say it was kind of 50-50 on, to be honest. And then as much as I do appreciate this movie trying to really satisfy fans of both Scooby and Courage, 
I do think this movie tries to cram in too much of what it wants to accomplish. It's too crowded to really get fully invested in the story. And there's just moments that obviously not only am I bored watching the movie, but there were numerous moments that just felt like they were just so rushed. And not only did it feel really overcrowded, and like I said, rushed in many moments, but I do feel in general, I think there just could have been more to the story to make it fully interesting. The ideas they have going for it are definitely interesting, but for me, the story just didn't really come together to just like really win me over. While no doubt there's definitely crazy moments that happen in this movie, compared to Courage and even, you know, the Scooby shows or even for what I've seen, some of the Scooby movies, it does feel honestly really toned down. I do think the climax is the most interesting part of the movie because I do think the climax is where they do get kind of wild. And I do think uh, the climax of this movie, if anything, is more of what I wish the rest of this movie was because I was, like I said, just really bored with this movie. But when it got to like the last like probably like 10-ish or 12-ish minutes, somewhere around there, I was really into it, and I was really having a lot of fun. I thought they did a lot more interesting stuff with it, but just personally for me, leading up to the climax of the movie, I didn't really feel there was much interesting stuff going on. And my final negative, and it's easily the, the worst part of the movie, I think everyone has talked about this part. This part left me speechless, and not in a good way. Uh, it deals with Eustace and he raps. I, I'm not joking. They actually have Eustace rap. And it literally comes, pun intended, out of nowhere. Literally, out of nowhere, that rap scene comes. And I'm just questioning life going, why? Why did you make this guy rap? I just did not get that choice at all. It did not need to be in the movie at all. It literally could have been a deleted scene. And wow, I, I, I just, I cannot unsee that scene. I really, really hated that rap scene. It's the only part in the movie I can say I honestly really, truly hated. So overall, I do appreciate what Straight Outta Nowhere did when it came to the world of Scooby-Doo and bringing back Courage the Cowardly Dog, the gang for one last time. I'm pretty sure most fans are going to be pleased with this movie, and I can personally definitely understand that because, yeah, it is nice to see Courage and the Scooby gang interact with each other. Just for me personally, I wish they just got a much better movie because apart from some of the interactions being obviously fun, the humor was just not there for me. It really was not cutting it for me. I did not think the storyline was very interesting. It really does break my heart saying this, but I'm going to have to give straight out of nowhere, Scooby-Doo meets Courage the Cowardly Dog, two out of four stars. So everyone, in the comments down below, let me know what did you think of Straight Outta Nowhere and what are your thoughts on Scooby-Doo and Curse the Cowardly Dog. And please tell me if you want to, uh, what's your favorite Scooby-Doo episode? It could be whichever show. What's your favorite Scooby-Doo movie? What's your favorite episode of Curse the Cowardly Dog? And of course, everyone, I want to give a big thank you to Andrew Hayes for reviewing this movie with me. This is actually the third time I've reviewed a Scooby-Doo movie with Andrew. So it was obviously a real privilege to do this review with Andrew. If you want to follow me on Letterboxd, Twitter, Facebook, I'll leave links to all of them in the description down below. Letterboxd especially, I do really, really suggest you follow me there considering I know I am not consistent with video reviews like I once used to be, but if you want to keep up with all the movies I watch and all that, just um, keep up with my box. Like I said, I'll leave a link to that. Thank you all so much for taking the time to watch this. I hope you all have a happy Halloween. This is 22 Spooky Dude here. And don't forget, I bring my spookiness and... Talk power! Ooh, happy Halloween!